cerebro spinal fluid rhinorrhea csf rhinorrhea is a leakage of the csf from the subarachnoid space into the nasal cavity due to a defect in the dura bone or the mucosa roots of leak fluid may escape directly into the nose from a defect in the anterior cranial fossa either via the frontal ethmoid or the sphenoid sinuses or from the cribriform plate csf leak from the middle or the posterior cranial fossa usually communicates with the nasal cavity via the mastoid cavity and middle ear through the eustachian tube if we talk about the physiology of the csf the adult volume is 130 to 150 ml daily production is 350 to 500 ml from where the production of csf takes place it is a choroid plexus the lateral third fourth ventricles csf changes every 6 to 7 hours body regenerates its csf volume 3 times per day well the reabsorption of the csf takes place at the arachnoid granulations one wave wall into the dural sinuses requires a csf pressure greater than the venous well the normal csf the color is clear the protein is less than 40 mg per 100 ml the glucose is 45 to 80 mg per 100 ml chloride is 120 to 130 mg per dl there are no rbcs WBCs are 0 to 5 cells per ml. Pressure is 5 to 15 centimeters of water. In the recumbent position, glucose in the CSF is 65 percent of the serum. One must remember that the lower glucose and the lower protein is present than the serum, but higher chloride. This will help in the investigation in confirming the CSF leak. Now come the CSF rhinorrhea. The sites. The most common site is a cribriform plate. At, then comes the ethmoid roof sphenoid sinus the superior wall lateral wall or the greater sphenoidal wings frontal sinus the posterior wall and the tympanomastoid space via the eustachian tube classification of the csf leaks it can be congenital acquired accidental inflammatory neoplastic or spontaneous in congenital there is a congenital skull based defect csf leak associated with the congenital meningocele or meningoencephalocele congenital hydrocephalus in acquired is a traumatic most common reported cause of the csf leak it is 70 to 80 percent adrenergic trauma internasal surgery example the internasal ethmoidectomy endoscopic sinus surgery skull based surgery the transnasal endoscopic approach well in the accidental trauma the head injury open or closed the post traumatic hydrocephalus In inflammatory the sino nasal polyps the invasive fungal sinusitis the mucosal and the skull base osteomyelitis in neoplastic the sino nasal malignancy the nasopharyngeal carcinoma and the intracranial tumors in spontaneous the csf leak which occurs in the absence of any distinct etiology factor are included in this category well if we talk about the management it consists of the history examination investigation and treatment In history, one must remember there is a unilateral watery rhinorrhea and the unilateral anosmia. Well, due to the increased intracranial pressure, the headache and the visual disturbance and the projectile vomiting is seen. Recurrent meningitis, especially the pneumococcal, any previous surgery and head injury, must be ruled out. In examination, reservoir sign and the hollow sign. In reservoir sign, the unilateral watery rhinorrhea increases with the valsalva and change in position. posture hello sign the ring sign double ring sign the handkerchief test system the associated meningitis in 30% and the pneumo cephalus in 30% naso endoscopic examination may identify the site of the leak in 36% of the cases may identify the cause like the encephalocele otoscopy exclude the middle ear effusion as a defect in the middle of the posterior cranial fossa can be the origin of csf for rhinorrhea investigations laboratory investigations the imaging and the intrathecal dyes markers in laboratory investigation the immunofixation of the beta 2 transferrin which is sensitivity of 100% and specificity of 95% a false positive may be found due to the abnormal transferrin metabolism which can be seen in the chronic liver disease in born errors of the glycogen metabolism genetic variations from the transferrin and neuropsychiatric disease or rectal carcinoma glucose protein chloride determination the glucose and the chloride are higher in the csf than in the nasal secretion while protein is lower now the intrathecal fluorescein combined with the endoscopic examination this procedure involves a lumbar puncture with the intrathecal injection of 0.1 ml of the 5% fluorescein diluted in 10 ml of the patient's csf 
Demonstration of the green yellow fluid defines the side of the CSF leak. Blue filter is used. Now the fluorescein tracking down the post nasal space from a defect in the roof of the posterior ethmoid sinus, not detectable on CT or MRI scanning. Now CSF rhinorrhea imaging, the high resolution CT, the CT cisternography, the MRI cisternogram, the radioactive isotope cisternogram, the overpressure radionuclide cisternography is done. Well, in the high resolution CT, the most common modality to identify and localize the CSF leaks. 1 to 2 mm thickness slices, coronal section for the anterior skull base and axial section, section for the posterior wall frontal sinus. Look for the fracture bony defects in the ethmoid sphenoid of the frontal sinus as well. Intracranial air, pneumocephalus, and opacified sinuses. In CT cystinography, dyes used today are much less irritating to the arachnoid and CNS than metrizimide. With the omnipake iohexol and iopamidol, iopamidol is used. The optimal imaging technique. Precise location of CSF leakage in active leaks and 76% localization of the CSF leaks. This is the CT cystinogram showing the right cribriform defect. This we can see. Well, then comes the MRI cystinography using the T2 weighted imaging. It's a less invasive, lacks the bony details of the CT, therefore, the limited ability to detect or localize the skull based defect. Excellent for the meningeal seals or encephalus seals. Intrathecal gadolinium may improve usefulness in CSF leak localization. Sensitivity is 80 to 100 percent, accuracy 96 percent when combined with the coronal CT. Well, now the treatment of the CSF rhinorrhea. It's conservative and surgical. In surgical, there is an intracranial and extracranial. In intracranial, there is an extra and the intradural. With extracranial, there is a transfacial and endoscopic nasal surgery. Well, the conservative treatment, the conservative measures to decrease the flow through the fistula site for one to two weeks. Bed rest, head elevation 30 degrees, avoidance of coughing, sneezing, nose blowing, heavy lifting or straining at stools, stool stool softeners, antitusis, acetazolamide, spinal test 3 to 5 days after CSF leak stops. Prophylactic antibiotics are given. Now, what are the indications? No response to the conservative management, patient with a large high volume fistula. No traumatic leaks, non traumatic leaks, prolonged leaks regardless of etiology, recurrent leaks, traumatic leak with the intracranial complication, patient with an open wound that are connected to the dural defect, interoperative identification, intracranial or nasal. Now, the surgical treatment, the intracranial approach, approach is via the craniotomy. Method of choice is if coexisting intracranial pathology causing leak that requires excision. Associated morbidity is Anosmia almost, almost always due to the retraction of the dura of the cribriform plate. Post of intercellular hemorrhage, cerebral edema, osteomyelitis of the frontal bone flap, and success rate is 50 to 73 percent. The technique is a combination of the pedicle periosteal flap and dural flaps of the facial grafts. Cranialization of the frontal sinus with the pericranial flaps gives the best results. With pericranial technique is used to repair the anterior skull base defect. Now the extra canal approach, method of choice for assessing most leaks of the posterior wall of the frontal sinus. Different approaches are via the external ethmoidectomy to assess the cribriform plate. Transmastoid for defect in the tegment in the petrous temporal bone. Transseptosphenoidal for the access to the sphenoid sinus. Via the coronal and the eyebrow incision to frontal sinus. Now the endoscopic repair approach to defect site. Kirby from plate and roof of ethmoid. Middle turbinate is a useful landmark to determine an approach to medial and lateral lamina defects. Sphenoid sinus can be approached via the trans ethmoidal approach by performing the anterior and posterior ethmoidectomy. Lateral recess of the sphenoid is approached via the trans phenoid, trans pterygoid approach. Frontal recess of the frontal sinus. Defect in the roof or posterior wall of the frontal sinus requires an external approach. Frontal recess and sinus defect can be repaired over the transnasal endoscopic approach. After adequate exposure has been obtained, mucosal surrounding the defect is removed to expose the bone. This helps to better adherence of the graft material. 
Well, the graph material, the free flap used are the conical cartilage, the temporal fascia, the rectal, rectus sheath, the abdominal, the thigh fat, the muscles, the radial free, forearm flap, and the calvarial bone. Now, the pedicle flap. The pedicle nasoceptral flap is also called the hadart flap. Based on the posterior septal branch of the sphenopalatine artery. Middle turbinate flap, inferior turbinate flap. Regional pedicle flap, example the pedicardial fascia and the temporoparietal facial flap. Now if we talk about the reconstruction, the reconstruction can be performed by using the following techniques overlay, underlay and the combination of the both. In the underlay technique, the graft is placed between the dura and the bone. Here you can see the graft is placed between the, this is the dura yellow and this is the black is the bone. So graft is placed between the dura and the bone. In the overlay technique, the graft is placed over the skull based bone. This is the skull based bone black and the dura is just placed over it. It is used in a small defects less than 5 mm. Then comes the combination of the underlay and the overlay technique. Moderate size 5 to 10 mm defects and larger greater than 10 mm require combined techniques. In this, you can see the cartilage is placed between the dura and the bone, whereas the other graft fascia is placed over like an under overlay technique. Now this is a bar top technique. Now this is the meninges seal which is reduced and the fascia is placed over it like an overlay graft. This is a fascia cartilage fascia sandwich technique. Here what happens? This is the meninges encephalo seal which is reduced. The cartilage piece placed over the fascia with a collar of fascia lying externally. So this is the fascia and this is the cartilage and the third fascia is placed over it so fascia cartilage fascia graft first fascia is placed then cartilage and then again a fascia is placed well if you talk about the post-operative care the complete bed rest with the head elevation for a period of five days nasal packs are removed on the fifth post-operative day nose blowing strenuous activity lifting of heavy weights and the bending down is avoided up to six weeks post-operatively Antibiotic prophylaxis is given, diuretics, follow-up CT scan at 3 months post-operatively is done. Thank you.